Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Plurk, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Monday, the 14th of July, 2014, and this is episode 87, Craft Only Zone. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. The stuffy knit along is going on, and I was so bad last week about this whole thing. I'm really sorry. So, First, let's do the coupon code, which is for the Ami Eyes shop on Etsy. The coupon code is BPC2014. I'm still bad this week. I didn't check the amount. Okay, it's going to be right here for, for what that coupon code does for you. I'm sorry. <sighs> I thought I was so good this week, and then no. But I also wrote down the tag for the knit along crochet along, um, which is B-P-H-S-T-U-F-F-Y-S-14. And now the prizes. There are two, a set of eyes from Lucas of Ami Eyes and a skein of yarn from Dancing Dog Dye Works, Flamenco DK. This is the I Believe colorway. And this skein is 231 yards. It's super gorgeous. So definitely get over there. I encourage double dipping wherever you can. Now would be now's a good time for stuffies because there are several Susan Claudino knit alongs going on. Um, Christmas in July is happening for a lot of podcasters. So if you're making toys for anybody for holidays. Um, definitely double dip and if you don't want to see the little message pop up on Ravelry with the sad face that says you already posted this post, just um, change the caption and that post will, that little warning will not show up. It's basically to make sure that people aren't spamming but I personally post every project that I finish in as many threads as I can for prizes because why wouldn't you? As long as they're okay with it, I'm okay with it. I finished two projects this week for the for the stuffy along. Both of mine are crocheted because I would rather crochet than knit toys. Crochet is just so much faster for me to do toys. Don't enjoy the the knitting of toys. Anyway, this is the Baby Elephant Amigurumi Pattern by Lucy Ravensar. I'm sorry the lighting is not good this week. It's very overcast, so the colors aren't perfect. I will try to have good color accurate photos on Ravelry. So here's the elephant. I followed the pattern mostly, except they said he was, I can't remember if it was safety eyes or beads for the eyes, but I instead just did French knots because this is going to be for a baby's room and I don't want them messing with anything. So I figured French knots would be the best idea. And the, the thread is actually connected between the two French knots. So even if they somehow managed to get one French knot undone, hopefully my best friend would notice that there was a string hanging out of the elephant before any choking hazard could happen. So that's adorable. I made it out of solar flare fibers in the Zoria base, which is two strands of merino and one st strand of superwash merino. This is the colorway Purple People. No, not Purple People. People Eater. Sorry, I get that confused because every time I say it, I get the song. One Eyed, One Horn Flying Purple People Eater. Yep, that happens every time I think of the colorway. And I used a USD 3.25 millimeter hook for that. The other stuffy that I finished I'm glad that I'm showing you because that means I can now hide it and put it away so that my son will not see it before his birthday, which isn't until September. This is Dirk by Lydia Tresselt. Oh, he's so big, it's uh, 
but yeah, it's tricky to try to show you. So here he is, and these eyes are dragon eyes from Amy Eyes. They're hand painted. Can you see it? I think you can. The, the flecks of white that make it look reflecty. Right now my computer screen is reflecting, sorry. So this pattern is not meant to be this tall. I used two strands of fingering weight held together instead of one strand of fingering weight. Okay, he's as tall as my torso. Well, yeah, from my lap to my chin. So he's a big guy. Two strands of fingering weight held double except for the face hands and the inside of the ears. That is Red Heart Super Saver in the buff colorway, which is a worsted. I used three different yarns in the body for the hood, the ears, and the legs, and the tail. I had an orange cashmere blend sock weight yarn that someone sent for Gabriel. So um, my hands are getting a little itchy now. They're not breaking out yet, but they're getting itchy. Um, and then I ran out of that somewhere in this section right here. Did I say I did the arms in cashmere? Because I did not. Um, so I had another solid orange, which was Malabrigo. And it was a darker orange, but I don't think you can tell that one of the strands changed color, really. And then the other strand held throughout was Bambit, the Sensations Bamboo and You Bright Multi Pattern. I also used some leftovers from a pair of socks that I made for Gabriel at the beginning of the year for the cuff and the spikes and the wings, which are a little bit curled, but I'm not too worried about it because he probably won't notice that they're curled. And then the scarf in the pattern is knit, but I do not knit scarves if I don't absolutely have to. So I just changed it up and crocheted it, crocheting through the back loop on every row so that it would mimic a ribbed scarf. And the scarf is made out of Karen one pound in the colorway forest floor. So that is Gabriel's birthday present. He's huge, huge. Or she, I don't know. I don't think it'll matter. I'm pretty sure Gabriel will say that it's a boy. So he's finished with over a month to spare. Almost two months. Well, I guess when I finished him, it would have been two months. Yay! That's because September is awfully close to the holiday season. And I have a lot of holiday crafting. So I figured I'd get that done. So, of course, go over and post your finished objects to the finished object thread. If you have any questions, go over to the chatter thread. I will help if I can, and if I can't help immediately, I will let you know that I am looking for an answer. I only have one other finished object. I finished spinning the merino bats. So this is a two-ply. I spun one bat as one single and the other bat as another single. It is a progressive, so it starts, one ply is this turquoise color, tealy color, with locks in it, which are purple, yellow, and orange. And then the bat, the other bat was this orange color, and then it went into the yellow color. The yellow was small, so I'm going to try to find you a chunk of that, I think you can see. So that yellow color and then into the teal color. So I split the second bat so that it was mostly an orange section and then in mostly yellow section with a little bit of orange. And I tried not to get any teal in, but of course, you know, it's a bat. And then the third section was teal and yellow. And the last section was just teal. This ended up being about 94 yards from 44 grams. I don't have any intent for this yarn. It's just gonna, I don't know, sit around until something is like, hey, make me, or the yarn says, 
hey, send me to so-and-so. We'll see what happens with this yarn. I don't have plans yet. I'll let you know when I do, of course. Works in progress. Still spinning like a crazy person. I finished that, that bat project and I told you that um, my plan is to spin on three different projects a day, two very specific ones, and then the third one can be from any of my works in progress. Well, I got this tiny Turkish spindle from, um, I still can't tell you who it's by because this pink fiber was started on here when I received it. And the name is under the, the winding of it. But I received this for my birthday. It had the pink fiber on it. I spun with the pink fiber a little bit at that time, but not so much because I had other spinning projects. Well, this is actually my son's favorite spinning project because he says that the spindle is child-sized. So he spins it and he spins at about a fingering weight single. It's pretty consistent. It's pretty even. And then when he is finished, I go back and draft out his single to make lace so that the entire project is uniform. You see the... I don't think it's gonna focus, but... Um, so yeah, he does... He spins on this when I'm spinning on my other projects, and then I spin his single again and then add more to it. So this is my 15 minute a day project. Um, I believe that this little sampling is merino silk, but I'm not 100% sure. I would bet it though. I would bet on it. I'm still spinning on my Spanish peacock supported spindle and I'm doing much better now. It's still a little bit tricky and it's not it's not even because I'm really working towards becoming even. It's just not it's not quite there yet. So it goes from like a fingering weight single to a lace weight single. I'll get there. This is today's spinning. So what I've what I've been doing for photo purposes is spinning the day's spinning into this temporary cup up here and then at the end of the day winding it onto the full cup. I like the temporary cup. It's easier for me to continue spinning um, rather than having to stop and wind it onto the, the bottom every time I get a length. Some people don't like temporary cups, but I do for the supported spindle project. I mean, I wouldn't do it on a drop spindle, but it would be it would be silly too, I feel, on a drop spindle. Maybe I'm incorrect and you do it on a drop spindle too. I don't know. But I like it on the supported spindle. I am spinning Cloud Lover. 40% merino, 40% superwash merino, 20% silk. And this colorway is Blackberry Truffle. I finished carding the two ounces into roll eggs so I could spin it. And Rolex get really, really fluffy. I'm going to show you. Okay, so here you can see the Rolex are kind of fluffing out a little bit. That's the other two ounces of fiber. So this pile right here and that part of a braid over there are the same amount of fiber. But this takes up easily twice as much, probably three times as much space. And I've actually spun some of this. So this is not an equivalent amount to the half braid. Yeah. Carding adds a lot of air into the fiber. So I'm glad that I, I decided to, um, to split it so that the two ounce braid would have the color in it because I think I would really miss that from the final project. And I'm actually really enjoying the the spin on the supported spindle now that I'm getting it. It's still, still frustrating because I want to be able to just spin exactly what I want, like I'm able to on a drop spindle. And I'm not there yet, which is frustrating, but I'm getting better. 10 minutes a day is definitely helping. And I am almost twice as fast as I was when I started a week and a little ago. So that's not too bad. I'm still working on the doo -doo -doo, trying to figure out which of what of 
these things I want to grab. The Huckleberry Knits Superwash BFL in Centurion. I have started the third ounce, which means I finished the second ounce and I've started plying. Okay. So this bit right here, that's what the plied yarn is going to look like. It's a lace weight, which is what Josh wanted when he sent this fiber home with me for spinning purposes. And you can kind of see how it's going. It's a fractal, so right down here is the beginning and the gray's matched up and now it's one ply gray, one ply this really dark red color. I'm enjoying the spin. I, I think that I'll be able to spin the four ounces into a lace weight by the end of the month. It's halfway through the month. I'm already through the first half of the fiber um, singles wise and I've started plying that. So it will probably be tight, but I think I can do it. I'm gonna try really hard. And those are my spinning projects. Yay! <laughs> I have to admit that um, I love Tour de Fleece and I will enable whoever I can to do it, but man, it gets a little daunting when I'm not allowing myself to skip spinning when I don't want to. Last night I was in a VKN with Lisa and some other people, but Lisa's the important one because she totally mom voiced me into Tour de Fleece. I was getting really tired. It wasn't even that late at night, but I was getting really tired and I said, I think I'm going to fail toward a fleece. And she was like, why? And I said, because I really, I had spun the first two fibers, but I hadn't spun the lace. And I was like, I just don't, I don't want to, I'm tired. She was like, just do it. You'll feel better when you're done. It's like, fine. So I spun it and I did not fail toward fleece yet. I've done my spinning every day. Um, I am kind of looking forward to the rest day. I don't think that I will completely take the rest day off from spinning. I'll probably spill, still spin the lace because that has, you know, a, a deadline. But I'll probably take spinning off from the other two projects. Because I'm like, oh, there's so much spinning. I love it, but I don't know. I feel like I need a little break from it. But that's on the 17th, so a few more days of spinning all the projects and then a rest day, which I may or may not take fully. What else? I'm still working on my design socks. In this colorway that's so beautiful, the more I knit with this, the more I just want all the things to be made out of this. I want a sweater and a blanket and thigh-high socks and arm warmers and everything. I don't want to make all of those things. I just want those things to spontaneously appear in this color. So this is the bottom of the feet. And I will, I'm super, I'm super loving this design so much. It, I think it's my favorite design, but I think every design that I'm working on at the time is my favorite design, so. That's good, right? I should really like what I'm working on. I should like my patterns. So this is Solar Flare Fibers in the Apollo base, which is 80% BFL, 20% nylon in the Confetti Silver Cake colorway. Oh, I love this colorway so, so much. I posted a picture of it on Instagram and Beth said, I had the color in my hand at the ZK. Why did I set it back down? The yarn, yarn fumes, they make you do things that you want to and also do things that you don't want to. I'm working on a test knit for Lisa. I have to keep referring to my show notes because my desk is super full <laughs> and I will forget something if I don't look. So here's the bottom of the feet. I'm doing it two at a time, toe up. It's toe up pattern. And I'm really enjoying this pattern. I'm not very far yet, but I think that it's going to be really nice. I am knitting this out of Toe Footsies 
the, I don't know if it has a colorway. I don't see one. Number 743. And I didn't even think when I, when I was talking with Allison about the prize that she won, we agreed that I would make her socks. I didn't even think because Toe Footsies has 2.5% chitin. I don't know how to pronounce that. C-H-I-T-I-N, which is a fiber from shrimp and crab shells. I didn't even think that maybe Allison might be allergic to shellfish. I'm still going to knit this test knit in this yarn, but if Allison is allergic to shellfish, then I will be making her socks out of a different yarn. So yeah, that's where that's going. Because I don't know about shellfish allergies. I don't have any serious allergies to anything. So some people who are allergic to shellfish are like, they just can't ingest it. But some people who are allergic to shellfish can't even go into aquariums. So if Allison is allergic to them, then I will just make her different socks instead. Also on the needles. I have the Urban Survival Shawl by Josh Ricks. It's a mystery knit along. So if you are knitting along and you don't want to be spoiled, um, you might want to look away for a minute. But I am behind because I just started last week right before the podcast. And um, I'm in clue three. So I am that far. I'm going to show it now. So if you don't want to see, look away. So here is see this part right here this little hood thing I think it makes an excellent hood actually this little hood part is um, clue one and then over on the side here part of this is clue two to about to here that's clue two this right here that my hand is on. Ooh, I'm having camera issues today. My plan is to get through the first third of clue three today, second third tomorrow, third third on Wednesday, and then start clue four, which came out on Saturday on Thursday, and hopefully be super close to caught up, if not caught up, by the time the final clue comes out on this coming Saturday. That's my plan. I don't know if it's going to get there. We'll see. I definitely enjoyed Clue 2 so much more than Clue 1. I don't know why. It's still a lot of garter stitch, but I just did. I don't know why. And Clue 3 is also garter stitch, but there are panels of texture. This right here. I'm glad that my... my Two contrast colors are close in color, but still, um, still enough contrast between them that you can actually see the texture in that band. Because some people, theirs are really, really close, so you can't really see it. What I'm using for it is Mooch Fiber in. Midtown Sock, the colorway Fade Out. That's my main color. This awesome variegated. My first contrast color is Sensations Truly in Truly Turquoise. And my second contrast color is Premier Serenity Sock in the colorway Charcoal. I'm using US size four 3.5 millimeter needles for that. And I also started another toy, another stuffy. It doesn't look like much yet. This is the beginning of the head for the panda that I'm making, which I am using the Rocco the Raccoon pattern by Lydia Triselt to make this panda. I am going to be changing the tail and the color scheme 
but mostly using the pattern because it has a little mask, which I think is perfect for the panda. So, especially since pandas and raccoons are cousins. That is what I'll be using. Right now, I am using 716 Knit 716 Sock on dyed yarn. It's leftovers from the first Dirk the Dragon that I made. Jenna sent me her yarn to make her a dragon and said I could keep the leftovers so I have enough for the um, the face and the hands of the raccoon. I don't think I need it anywhere else because I think the ears are not flesh colored. So I, I'll definitely have enough for this panda and I decided what I'm going to do, I can't remember if I told you about this on the podcast last week or not. My sister said that it would be cool if, um, it was my idea, but she agreed with it, if the black spots on the panda were not actually black, but if I made them this purple color. So I'm using this leftover ball of yarn. I made a pair of socks for Steve using this, and we bought three balls because the first pair of socks I made for him, we needed three balls of yarn to, to make. But this pattern was different. The first one was heavily cabled. So um, when I bought this, I didn't know much about sock yarn usage for socks for Steve. But I used less than two balls. And then the leftovers from that I used in the temperature thigh highs. And then I still had this whole ball this whole 50 grams left over. So I'm going to use it to make the panda for my sister and I'm going to use all the darker purple stripes for the black and then I'm thinking, and this might be totally insane, this is probably totally insane but whatever I don't care, um, this white-ish stripe, it's not actually white, it's a very pale 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 purple but I'm thinking of cutting out all of those stripes from this yarn and using it to crochet the white parts of the panda. I don't know if it'll work. That might be totally insane, but that's my plan right now. I don't have any white sock yarn and I really don't want to go out and buy a skein of sock yarn only to use like a quarter of it and then have it sitting there with no purpose. And I just don't want to buy yarn if I don't have to right now. So that's what, that's my plan. We'll see how that works. I'm using a USB, which is 2.25 millimeter hook to make this. And those are all of my works in progress. That's, does that feel like a lot for you? That feels like a lot for me. But I am, um, I actually have a couple other works in progress. I just didn't work on them this week. Not enough to talk about. So sock yarn blankets. I have decided, because I'm getting very close, I have decided that I'm going to work it in chunks instead of working it across. That way it's easier to show you because it's getting kind of big. So these yarns right here, all of these stitch marker yarns, let me hold it up so you can see them all. These are ZK yarns. So these... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight over here. So all of these are ZK yarns, and I think that um, it's another two squares taller than this, maybe two rows taller, and then it'll be the no three rows taller. I don't know. It's very close to the top. This height is close to the top, but you can see that there's all that space left down there. And then on the other side, I have leftover project yarn that I'm using. And this is, the side is much smaller because I have a lot of ZK yarn and I'm not finishing projects every 10 seconds. So this is the orange Malabrigo that I used in Gabriel's Dragon. This is the multi-bright color that I used in the dragon. And this is the Regia hand dye effect yarns in marine that I used to make the second pair of cake socks. So I'm up to 650 squares in the blanket, which means 
there are only 128 squares to go. That is not that much. I mean, it's still a lot, but that's not that much. Especially with this whole celebratory square thing, it's kind of excellent. And I also did 11 hexapuffs, which brings the total up to 201. You guys, I've made 201 hexapuffs since I started that. That's crazy. That seems like a lot. I don't know. I don't know exactly how I did that. Okay, so again, I have project, project hexapuffs. So marine, bright multi. Oh no, this isn't bright multi. Oh, I didn't... Oh. No, it's okay. I thought maybe this was cashmere, and then I realized that I used all the cashmere and the dragon. So this is this is bright multi. The pink stripes are, and then the orange stripes are the Malabrigo. I striped it because celebratory hexapuff, as one does. Here's another celebratory hexapuff. Just add a little texture to one corner. This is the Malabrigo. And then these are all yarns from the ZK. This is a celebratory. I'm pretty sure that this is all leftover um, Malabrigo lace that Josh knit the sweater out of. Pretty sure that all three of these colors are. I know that they are all three Josh leftovers. So I made that hex puff and then, oh, I'm a liar. This is project leftovers. This is the five by five by Jenna. Uh, 716 knit. Yeah. 716 knit, 716 socks, five by five. These are ZK yarns. So I don't know what they are, just that they're awesome and lovely people gave me their leftovers for my project. That's pretty much all I have for you this week. I'm still reading King Arthur and His Knights. I am over a third of, I'm over two thirds of the way through it. I'm not, mm, it's okay. It's worth reading, but I don't love it. And I actually am kind of starting to hate every single character because they're just, <sighs> I don't know. I just, the, the code of chivalry seems really ridiculous to me. And like, it's totally logical to go kill a man because he says that his queen is more beautiful than your queen. Like, that's completely logical. Just, it seems very crazy. Very crazy. All of it. So that's what I'm reading. I put, I picked up a book from the library, but I didn't start reading it yet. And I don't have anything new. I don't have a list for you. And I'm starting to be washed out because the sun thinks maybe it wants to come out. It's not sure yet. I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string. And I will see you next week. Bye.